The following podcast is recorded and produced by the Podcast Precinct in affiliation with the network at BICBP-radio.com. The Podcast Precinct. Consistency. Creativity. Culture. The Nostalgia Funhouse proudly dedicates all episodes in the loving memory of Connie Chirac. So, Johnny, I've, I've been hearing really great things about this Nostalgia Funhouse. It just brings back so many great memories. Andrew, uh, another reason I'm getting in line with you here is that you really vouch for this show. So, I'm just going to believe you that this is the show that you know I've been wanting, which is just talking about all the fun stuff from our uh, yesteryear and years before. Uh, and I really hate anything meta, so I'm glad that what we're doing right now is not that. Oh, no, definitely. What is meta? Is, isn't that Ron Artessa's new name? <laughs> well, add world and peace to it, sure. <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is great. They Like, last year they were, like, tearing play sets and Halloween costumes. And well, they, that sounds cool. They get, like, these weird court recordings from, like, pop culture courts. Does anybody care about court cases? Uh, these ones are kind of cool. They put hmm. Scott Kelvin on trial for Santa Claus there. But, oh wow! Yeah. Okay, you're. That sounds interesting. Yeah, man. You know what's the best part about this is though? Because I hear they always got a really great sponsor. You can check it out right there. Fort Niagara is so many things. It's a logistical hub. It's a military post. It's a battleground. It's a diplomatic site. Uh, it's a place where so many different people come together. It's a tourist site. It's it's all these things. When you visit Old Fort Niagara, you can touch the same stonework that French soldiers and British soldiers and American soldiers touched hundreds of years ago. We only learn certain things in our, in our school, and we only learn it pretty much from, from one point of view. So coming here, it's in a broader range of education. It's a vantage point from each side, all these parties that were involved here. There's really nobody that our programming isn't for. Our programming truly is for everybody. Everybody's gonna get something out of it. The site is more than just a pretty view. It tells the story of our community and our beginnings as a country. We're gonna have a great day on the podcast because Andrew and I, Johnny here, are about to take a field trip. That's right, we're going out of town. We're not even going to have real class today. We're going to go somewhere else to quote-unquote learn, Andrew. That's what we're doing today. Oh, always got to quote-unquote learn. Are we getting into uh, the stagnant bus that was just used like 20 minutes ago and the bus driver yeah. disgruntled because they can't just go back to their little uh, transportation center and sit around and wait for us to get out of school? Yeah, because they, uh, you know, they couldn't... Uh, they need a smoke break at some point. <laughs> are, are, your mind- and they were all we were we were at uh they called them I think they called them activity buses. They weren't called school buses, but they were just basically a school bus, but they were colored white instead of yellow down here. I don't know about I whether- did not know that. Oh wow, that's how they were down here. Yes. So I did not know about the activity bus. And it was literally just a school bus painted white. That's <laughs> all it was, but it's what would take us on our field trips. I thought you were going to be in the after, what is it, the after school bus. So, like, if you had like detention or oh, I remember, something yeah. after school, there was like another bus, but no, 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 no. Have, wow, North Hickory, North Carolina is, yeah, let's say Hickory because that's not where I'm actually at. So, yeah. I'm cool with you saying that, yeah, okay. the, um, yeah, uh, it, we would. I only went that route because of the uh, comic book superhero guy that she showed. Oh, the hero. Yeah, literally a hero. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, we, um, in elementary school, when we would go on a field trip, we would actually, they'd always bring in the white, they called them activity bus. That was literally just a school bus painted white. I love that. But it was specifically for that is what it was used for. Like we didn't use any of our school buses to go on field trips. This is why I love having friends from different parts. Because... <laughs> See, I want to say that's what everybody did because that's how I grew up. Yeah, well, that's the great part, like of just like knowing things and like getting to know different people. Yeah, just to see how things like grew up because you just as a kid you're in this small world. You're yeah. in the small world. And you're in your small little area, and like we were explaining to you, like I remember the deposits. 
on cans and bottles and you were like yes wait a minute wait what? i remember being blown away that you didn't have bags so it's like what are yeah, you talking about right. <laughs> there are no more bags in uh it's like i want to get a bunch of bags to go up there and sell them no oh. <laughs> we got bags that, coming out the wazoo up down here i tell Matt all the time i'm like i don't even buy bags at all these anymore it's like if i go shopping at all these before i'd be like oh i gotta get bags no I just use the Walmart bags that I got saved up for a hundred years. Kroger. Yeah. Well, what do you need? I tell Matt all the time when he's like, I miss a good plastic bag. I'm like, well, what, what do you want? Walmart? Yeah. Kroger? I'm... I'll, I'll give you a good price, man. Yeah. Target, <laughs> what you, what, what do you, what, what should, do you we should just send them bags for Christmas. Just, just, <laughs> I'm going to send Will and Matt for Christmas. I'm going to send them just grocery bags. They can have some fun. Uh, you have no idea. <laughs> you don't know how many like because for years the grocery bag i'm i don't know if it's the same way there that was your garbage bag yep or like your uh trash can like in your office yes yep exactly that was the garbage bag right yeah oh also like going to talking about as we're talking about field trips going to school my mom would always pack me a bigger lunch Cause it was like, I don't know what it was. It was something special to go on a field trip. So it would be in a, it would be in a damn grocery bag, not my yes. paper bag or well, this even, even over. as an adult, when I had jobs that I had to leave to go to and I would, have, I would, when I would pack my lunch, I would put my lunch in a grocery bag. See, but no. yeah. So I don't know how they do it up in New York. If you don't have it, it's nope. like, it's such an old purpose. It's an old purpose thing for us down here. Nope. You gotta buy it a different way. You don't know how shocked I was that I couldn't return pop cans here in Texas. I get that <laughs> five cents back, and I'm like, wait a minute, it, I don't have to pay when I yeah. Go- we re- we're, we do recycle a lot here. Like we before everybody gets on to North Carolina, we recycle our our grocery bags like crazy. So yeah, like we have a recycling bin, but it just blows my mind because we don't. I don't pay a deposit anymore for each can or bottle that I buy. Yeah, well, I don't have to be like, oh crap, I'm throwing away five cents, or you know, the other. Yeah, that was so foreign to me when you when you were trying to explain that to me. It still doesn't make any sense. So the <laughs> other thing you would do is, okay, as a kid, we we did this. So say like you're on a trip and or you know you're driving somewhere, you either stop at a store or your parents give you, I call it pop, a can of pop or something like that, or soda. Yeah, we say so. I say soda here. Yeah, pop. same thing. It's the same thing. That is different. I know. Uh, (laughs) Yes. (laughs) But if you were done with it, instead of throwing it in the trash can, because you get five cents for it, there would be people, some, let's say, with an addiction and some people just looking to make extra cash. Yeah. uh, Would go through garbage or anything like that or walk through the parking lot. So we would just leave it by the tire. I don't know why we were taught this and people would get it. Then that way they would not have to dig through the garbage and they could just pick it up. Yeah. Put it in their bag. Uh, I have very strong memories as a kid of when recycling became a thing and we would go around and pick up cans like, like, you know, cans that were thrown on the side of the road or thrown in the trash and we'd pick those up because it's not like you'd make a lot of money, but as a kid, if you get a bunch of cans and recycle them, that's some money you can use to spend on a video game or something. Yeah. Because that's what I would do when my brother would throw a party is he would, because he was obviously hung over, uh, <laughs> he would give me $20 and then I got to take all the all the beer cans back. And my mom was yeah. like, where'd you get all these CDs and video games? And I'm like, oh, I just, you know, walking around getting cans. No, it was my brother telling me, here's $20 to shut up and to clean up. Yeah. But hey, worth I, it, man. Worth it. But if she would have grilled me any harder, I would I'd spill my beans. Now let me ask you this. When I'm when I got to middle school every year for sixth and seventh and eighth grade, we only took one field trip, but it was a major one. Like it was a week long field. It was like three or four day long field trip for yeah, each one of those. Or, wait, what? I'm not making this up. <laughs> I have never spent more than I remember thinking it was huge. When we would go to the Toronto Science Museum in Toronto, yeah. I think is about two hours away from Niagara Falls, New York. Yeah. So that is when we did get a special bus. We got like a, we thought it was amazing because we got like a Greyhound. 
And oh yeah, see, we we would get like uh, they were like it's like a tour bus. They would actually rent for us for this geez. for these trips. Where yeah. the hell did you live? Are In you North Carolina, it was it was not cheap. My mom had to save up for me oh, to be okay. able to go. I was uh, but three. Go back to the. We'll go back. I'll. We'll get there. We'll I, get there. No, I'll figure. We'll I'll figure, I want to know more about because like if we went to Toronto, like we had to get to school a little bit earlier. And yeah. They would, you know, the permission slip said, "Hey, they're not going to probably be back until like five o'clock." Yeah. But here's three to four days. Where the hell did you go? Uh, sixth grade was Jamestown up in Virginia, which okay. was one of the earliest settlements in America. Which is why we would go. It was like a big. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We got to go to the amusement park up there. I remember that very strongly. Uh, seventh grade was my favorite one because that was Washington D.C. and I love going to all the museums. I'm a big history nerd, as you know. Yeah. So I'm. I was. The I was in awe looking at Abraham Lincoln's top hat. I I cannot express to you how amazing that was to me. <laughs> and seeing his top hat, his actual top hat he wore. And in eighth grade, we actually just went to the Outer Banks of North Carolina and got to see all the cool lighthouses and and Kitty Hawk, where the first airplane was flown, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was multiple days. Like it was three or four days for this. That's the only time it ever happened. And it was only once per year, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Uh, elementary school, it was always one day, like out a couple hours away, field trips, and we'd come back the same day type of deal. So like you would stay at a hotel and all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, like North Carolina, DC, that's not like a hop, skip, and a jump, though. No, I mean, this would, uh, so was, again, I'm in the mountains. So getting to the Outer Banks was like a five, six hour trip oh. on a bus. Jeez. These, these are very nice buses, though. But I mean, I would say like for. Uh, What's the like, cl- closest kind of city next to where those Outer Banks are? Um, My whole thing with North Carolina, my whole geographical thing is Jacksonville. Because that's yeah. where I spent the most time at. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Man, Fayetteville's kind of in the middle-ish, like Raleigh, Fayetteville, that area is sort of in okay. the middle of the state. Um, actually, if you get to the Outer Banks of North Carolina, you're only like an hour away from Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. That's probably the closest, biggest uh, city. Is it Wilmington? I know Wilmington was. Well, there you go. That's what I can think of. Wilmington's really big there. Okay. Or as I would like to say, it's where they shot, uh, shot Dawson's Creek and the Ninja Turtles movie. So, Which Ninja Turtles? The first one. Oh, Pat, shout out to Pat Johnson. Yes. Yes, always. And to, and to that guy who talked to me at the convention at one time because he was one of the foot soldiers. He played one of the foot soldiers. See, there you go. Yeah, it was really cool. I uh, guess who probably trained that man, Pat, Pat Johnson. Johnson, the freaking legend, Pat Johnson. Legend. Yeah, I was just thinking, not to get off subject. How do we not? How did we not start this between like at least the three or four of us? A Pat Johnson just fan club. I want to do a. Put this write this down. We should do like a Pat Johnson month where we just watch the biggest movies that he had a big impact on and talk and just do that. Yes. That's, a, that's some classics. If you don't know who Pat Johnson is, this guy, if you, uh, uh, a certain movie called Karate Kid, a little movie called The Karate Kid, uh, a little movie called Ninja Turtles, the first one, the first Ninja Turtles movie. Uh, I believe Mortal Kombat, the good one, right? Uh, y- Yes, and uh, so many more. Uh, this guy was like the uh, the fight choreographer for that stuff. So this guy was awesome, and uh, he was the great uncle to our buddy Matt. So uh, I remember still being blown away by that information. <laughs> oh man, I was gonna say his birthday's in December, but we're pretty packed. Yeah, well, we can do it uh, next year. Maybe we get Matt to join us on at least one of this. Yeah, we definitely gotta get Matt because yeah, it is, it is his great uncle. Yeah, we'll 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 toss that to him in our group chat. But uh, yeah, uh, so let's talk. Let's go elementary school field trips first because I think as to what when you think of field trips, my brain thinks most people think of when they were in elementary school going on field trips for the most part. Uh so. I didn't go on one in kindergarten because I went to a Lutheran school and I don't yeah. think they had a whole bunch of money because it was a, so that was like the first actual school I ever went to, obviously, because it was kindergarten. And I remember they had combined grades. So yeah. first and second was a combined grade and like 
third, I think first, second, and third was all a combined grade. And then fourth and wow. fifth was a combined grade. There wasn't a whole lot of kids. So when I went to uh, public school, I was kind of shocked that there were so many kids, but uh, nothing there, but pretty much the standard. I don't know if it still is, is uh, I think anywhere between first and second grade, you go to a little place called Beckard Farms. Hmm. And like you said, and I think that is where I was. I was a very, how my mother put it nicely, adventurous child. Yeah. Uh, so I had to stand close to the teacher because I was kind of wandering and getting into things. And I had to, and they had a thing where if you wanted to, you milk a goat. And she made me, <laughs> she made me milk the goat. And that's my greatest memory of that. And also I remember, uh, always being told don't walk into the horse barn by yourself because there was a couple of horses that would kick. Yeah. But and don't yeah. ever go behind them. I remember that being a big thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, my and scene of mice and men made me yes. very happy. Yeah. I never yeah. did that. Yeah. Uh, you kind of brought it up earlier, but we also had, one of our field trips was to a science center and uh, there's a big one in Charlotte called discovery science center. And we had a blast going there. It even it's one of those that even has the um, what's that called? Where like you're sitting in those chairs and the chairs look up and it's like oh, a giant screen. What's that called? Planetarium. <laughs> yes. You know how you can remember that? It's so sad. Uh, South Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the planetarium. The planetarium. They never said the letter T in there. Yeah. yeah uh, but I remember being that was my favorite part because we uh, because it actually felt it was, the screen was so huge. You actually felt like you were in the movie in a way, like you're so immersed in it. And we watched one on the Serengeti. <laughs> I remember being like, how cool it was because he was following one of the rivers there, and there was a waterfall. And you actually went down the waterfall. I was like, oh, this is so dang cool. I don't know if they have that, but they had something like that in at uh, one of the Niagara Falls visitor centers. But I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, what was the? Oh. We did go to Canada because I remember that was always my mother being a single mom. Uh, that was always like one of the worst things for her because she would have to find our birth certificate. Because back then, if you were under a certain age and you were going over the border, they would have to you would have to have a photocopy of your birth certificate. And that's not oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. obviously it's not like it is now. So lucky enough, she could just copy it at work. Cause I remember she's like, Oh, I don't want to go spend a damn dime to go get a copy of this. Cause you remember that when stores would have the copy machine, yeah, yep. you drop a dime or something in there in a quarter and you could make a copy. But yeah, we went to a maple, maple syrup farm and oh. we got to do that. And remember she had some money and she gave me, I think like five or 10 bucks, which is balling back then. Yes. And, That's book fair money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I got some of these maple candies and I've never had them again since, but I kind of miss them. Yeah. It was like pure maple sugar, but we got to see like them like tap a tree, and then get the sap out of it, the boiling, <clears throat> everything else. That was yeah. an <clears throat> interesting field trip. I was very lucky when I was in elementary school because uh, that was when mom was a stay-at-home mom during that era oh so you and were lucky, man you, i was I'm very lucky because she would actually volunteer at school especially when my sister became school age too so she could just go to because and also the elementary school was literally like we could walk to it from where we live okay. so it's all these things going going in our favor here and uh, mom would volunteer at one point she worked in the library there Ooh. even uh, but she would also go on our field trips with us sometimes. And I remember, and this is back when it was cool to have your mom with you when yeah, you're in elementary school. That's what I'm saying. I was like, damn, you're so lucky, man. Yeah, I was so, I was like the cool kid uh, because mom was a chaperone a, f a few times on some of these field trips. And I have very strong memories of going to the gift because that's always the best part is when you get to go to the gift shop when I was a kid. Yeah. And mom would let me get like one book or something like that. And I would always find, do you remember these? I don't know if they had these up there. I'm going to assume they did. I love but, finding out stuff that you guys had or we had and you didn't have. I love this. This is my favorite part of podcasting with Johnny. 
All right, so growing up, I always loved the activity books. You know, the ones that had the dot the dots and the yeah. uh, color and pages and the color by numbers, that kind of stuff, and the mazes. Yep. Well, at some of these historical places, they would have these uh, books that were coloring slash activity books, but it was all of historical stuff. Okay. So, and I would go to the point where I had like three or four of them because mom would always let me get one. And I, one that I remember the most was like, it had like, I was so proud of myself because I had a dot to dot that was, that went up to over a hundred. Okay. It was just, dot. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying, uh, cause, Cause in my head, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, he means connect the dot. Yeah, I'll connect the dots. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. No, no, I just I like. I always said dot to dot. No, I. That's what I said. I like this because I like <laughs> to hear yeah. different things. Yeah. So our connect slash dot to dot, and it went and it would go over to a hundred to like a hundred and fifty when you're so used to do like the thirty or thirty five, and when you're like in elementary school age, you're like, oh yes, because it would it would actually create when you were done like some like historical building or something like that. Okay. Yeah, and I was remember being blown away, and I'm very proud to show my mom, hey, look at this. Uh, your son's really good at counting to 145 or whatever it was. And I made a sweet picture of this uh, of this old building where people live in the 1700s or whatever. <laughs> That's one of my uh, kind of depressing things is when my kids grew out of the children's menu, and I could no longer do word finds and things of that nature. Oh, yeah, I know. I always love doing that. Yeah. I have a okay, so I mean, it's kind of one of those things. So I chaperoned. I'm actually surprised I didn't get kicked off of ever chaperoning a field trip again. <laughs> okay, so I, my oldest son, they went to the Buffalo Science Museum. Yeah, and I was a chaperone, and they separated everybody by. I don't think you. Could, I'm just gonna say it, even though I don't think you can say it. So like, boys went with the fathers, girls went with. I was gonna oh. say gender, but. I don't I don't know how to work around it. Girls went with the moms and boys went with the dads. Yeah. Yeah. So like if you were a boy, you got sent with a group of dads. So yeah. I had like I think six or eight kids with me. And then the teacher was like, okay, we're gonna do a bathroom break. This is a funny story. This is why I gotta bring this up. So they're like, we're gonna do a bathroom break. And they're like, okay, uh she just called me like dad for some reason, which was really weird in my mind. Uh, so she was like okay you have oh no it was dads it was like you have eight kids make sure you come back with eight kids and me being the smart ass that i am i said are we do we got to come back with the exact same eight kids or <laughs> yes. just eight kids <laughs> yeah you just gonna find random kids if you lose yeah. one who cares yeah i told my wife that story and she said you did it i was like hey <laughs> I was covering all my bases. You got to make sure. I'm going to ask you this, too, on a sort of related note. Did you ever have a friend uh, growing up who would not call their parents mom or dad? They would actually call them by their names? Never in a million years. No, I. Uh, so my friend Susie does it now. Yeah. We grew up with very, I want to say strict parents, but we walked the line. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. You, yeah, you. Trying so, to cash it. Yeah. Yeah. We walked the line. So you could do pretty much whatever you want, but if they felt like you were stepping out of line, you if you've been disrespectful or something. So yeah. I think she called her mom Joellen one time, and I've never seen a hand move so quick. <laughs> but now she calls her Joellen and she goes like, because we were talking about one day, and it, like, this is my mom's best friend. So that's yeah. how we, we grew up together. So in the one day she was like, she was like, yeah, like I, she lets me call it Jamalin. She just lets everything blow by. I'm like, Susie, they're just tired now. We, we won. We, we just had to wear them down after years and years. <laughs> we won. Like I would, would call my mother like, get, like Constance and stuff like that. And I, yeah. like now, like I'd be like, come on. And I would call her by her middle name. Like if I felt like she was spoiling my kids. Like yeah, she cut up their apples. God forbid if she cut up an apple for me when I was a kid. <laughs> I learned there's a difference between mothers and grandmothers. Oh right? yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, uh, the reason I bring it up is uh, you know this guy, a certain Trevor Franklin. Okay, 
would always call his mom Jane when we were growing up, and it really? bug it would bug the shit out of me. <laughs> I don't see that on a traveler. It's really weird because when he got older, he would call her mom. But when we were kids, I don't know why he would do it. I don't know if he would just do it when he was talking to me. He would always call her Jane. He he was he was always very like he's never disrespectful or anything like that. But he called uh, it to her face. Like I remember her being in the room when him when him saying Jane. Yeah. But did uh, he like? But did he like say like? Hey Jane, what's for dinner? Or it hey, Jane, it's, I need it's help literally, home? yeah, or stuff it, like that. Yeah. Or was it like in conversation, like, hey Johnny, I gotta go home. Jane's calling. No, it's always like, I mean, I would I I mean he did come over here a lot. Well, over to my house a lot, but I think overall I probably spent more time spending the night at their house, right? And I have very strong memories of him. Derek would not do this, his brother. I never heard Derek call his parents by their name. But uh, he would always, Trevor would always say, uh, yeah, so uh, Jane, for breakfast this morning, Jane's making us uh, these pancake hot dogs we like. And it would just hit my ear wrong. I was like, oh, just, I remember even telling him, just call her mom. I even told him that once. Just call her mom yeah. for me because I bugged me so much. But it was never disrespectful. He's He was very, he, to this, I mean, she's passed, sadly she's passed on, but. Uh, he was very close to her, so it was never like he didn't love her or anything like that. It was he was always very respectful to her because uh, honestly, Jane was a freaking awesome person. But uh, he would call her Jane, and I don't know why, but it just rubbed my ears and my yeah, soul. It was almost like fingernails on a chalkboard to me. Not as a kid, like now, I that's can't. what I'm saying. As a kid, yeah. If you're an adult and you call your parents, I still call my parents mom and dad. Yeah, but I, as an adult, it, it doesn't feel like it'd be as as hurtful to my ears to hear, but we were kids when he was doing that. And it just bugged me like crazy. Yeah. I would only do it to my mother. If she like did something that would like, like I said, like the one time I'm like, who cut up this apple and left the mess? And she's like, Oh, I did. And I was like, Oh, were you hungry? And she was like, no, Jacoby said he wanted an apple. He could eat it. Like I had to eat it as a kid. Yeah. You so, grab the apple and you eat the apple. Yeah. yeah um, the one thing I did, and it's always when I was joking with my mom, I would call her mother because she hates being yes. called mother. Yeah, I, I did that. <laughs> she would always look at me with that eye, like, you call me mom. <laughs> well, my mom would hate it when I do the Stewie, the mom, 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 mom mama, mom. mommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, call her, I go mom. Sorry for a side tangent, but I just had to get that out. I just no, that I sparked understand. that memory to me. Oh. oh, okay. So back to the bathroom story. So there's yeah. more to this. So, oh, okay. It's me and one other guy, and we got like eight. This is like pre K. Okay. So these kids are like four, maybe five years old. Yeah. And the one kid is like, I can't reach. He's trying to pee in like the highest urinal possible. And he's yes. like, I can't do it. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. I don't yeah. know what to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's not your kid. <laughs> so I had my hands like out like this as you can see like they're flat and yeah. i just hooked underneath his arms like a forklift yes. and I had my head turned and I'm like, let's go 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 are you done and then i just like dropped them down <laughs> I don't know what the rules were okay yeah no i get that but that's like that's a sitcom waiting I to happen another right kid at one point he asked me something about helping to pull up his pants and i was like i think you're on your own yeah, <laughs> like, I, yeah like you gotta figure it out kid I, i'm like I'm I, I can't i can't i can't do that like yeah. no more I, like, I think that was the last fuel trip i ever went on with like real little kids because yeah. it was like i'm not doing this i love my son i wanted to spend time with my son and it just ended up being way way more than what i thought it was gonna well, did oh, you all did you also have this fear? I'm assuming y'all did this up there. When it was field trip day, I'd always have this fear that I forget my permission slip that my mom had signed. I don't know why my brain was always like, "You better remember." Like I was hyper focused on making sure I brought that permission slip had, so I didn't get left behind. Headlines. Oh, we did too when I got when I got the, the when I got older. But like some days, some field trip, especially when it's like just like a day field trip, oh, like no. when you're not going too far away, you just need to bring it the day of. No, so you would you would have to I would have to give it to my mother and she had by like so we get it like on a Monday. Yeah. You gotta she, sign it by a certain day. If we didn't sign get it in by Friday, yeah. We weren't going. 
I definitely had stuff like that too. Yeah, that was our big thing. Was I don't ever remember doing it like, oh, my mother signed it. Yeah, I could go probably because like I said, like a lot of stuff was. We did a lot of stuff in Canada because it's so close to us. Yeah, so but it was but it's, but it's still going to another country. You're yeah. going to another country, and you know you got to have the birth certificates, and I'm pretty sure you got to maybe call customs and be like, listen, we're bringing a bus full of elementary school kids over and that's how we do it and maybe we did a lot of field trips over there because uh not too much like educational stuff but like uh it's probably a little bit cheaper because yeah. of, of our dollar actually one of my field trips was the first time i saw a ghost we talked about this in the ghost story oh yes yeah so that was a field trip uh the fort niagara one yeah that was always because that was always a big thing. We have a very historical area when it comes to like Revolutionary War stuff, yeah, uh, and Civil War because we have the Underground Railroad. Um, but yeah, that was the first time I ever saw. I swear, I saw a ghost right there. And to to this day, when I go in there, I get the creeps in that one spot. Oh yeah, yeah. But, um, you also did not want to be the kid who forgot the permission slip and didn't want to didn't get to go because it's almost as likely you were embarrassed by this. <laughs> Yes, and I think you would like have to like stay somewhere. Yeah, I always wondered, like, because I knew somebody, and I was like, "What did you do?" And they're like, oh, "All I can think about is that Simpsons episode where Bart doesn't get to go." Maybe that's on a what field trip, of, like that type. Of yeah, movie. like he just has. To... So he had to stay with the principal the whole day. And I was like, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine that. Oh. I remember as I got older, like if I was in high school and my mom was like, oh, are you going on this field trip? And I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to go. And then she'd be like, you could just stay home then. Because yeah, that, 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 that's like when I got older, when I was younger, though, there was always I was always big on field trips. I'm trying to think of where else did we. Well, when you're younger and you're like, oh, we got a field trip today in your brain, your kid brain, you're like, oh, it means we don't have to do any schoolwork. I always felt bad. And it kind of like screws me up because like my mother she always kind of made my lunch but it was like here's your peanut butter sandwich here's your yeah Abby, here's your fruit snack and then the middle school i mean when i was younger it was like a juice box in middle school when we had vending machines i was like here go get yourself a brisk iced tea but when it was a field trip uh i would get like an egg salad sandwich like on half of a loaf of french bread yeah, like all this extravagant stuff and then i'd see the kids that got like that had to get the school lunch or the reduced lunch yeah look at them and i'm like damn and i think that's one of the moments where i was like i have really i don't have everything in this world but it kind but of i'm pretty like, lucky it's yeah. one of those uh there but my mom always used to say i don't know if your parents ever said this or anything there by the grace of god go on yeah yeah my grandparents would say that yeah. okay so it's kind of like one of those moments where it's like really appreciate so not to get like too soppy but i always looked at them and i'm like oh man they gotta like eat that and, and yeah like, i was i was very fortunate in that when we were growing up we definitely were not rich by any means at all but my parents would always provide always mm-hmm. i never ever felt like uh like we were like in the what's the word i'm gonna look for i never felt like we were wanting for anything right yeah. like but my parents worked super hard for that not uh, like well i mean you probably like what but you would never you never went without is my exactly yeah that's <laughs> my yes. mother put it that way you never yes. went without like, yes there was always food on the table that type of thing and I know not everybody's that fortunate, so I was very appreciative of all that. Because the oh, one of the field trips we did go to, I think it was middle school. We went to this sounds very out of date now, but it was kind of cool back then. Was the Buffalo News, the biggest newspaper that we have around here? So we got to go there. Uh, it was kind of very Daily Planet like, like in Superman movie, where they did a. Uh, where you could see like the bullpen and then we actually got to see the newspaper get printed. And then we got to take a newspaper home with me, which I was very excited for. Not too many other kids were, but I was very excited to actually see the process of a newspaper going from the journalist editor to the printing room, seeing it actually get printed 
yeah holding it in your hand i was like super stacked but i mean i didn't read like current events but i was always reading sports pages and everything so yeah and, and the, cool. i mean i was a big obviously a big fan of the comics page so i would have yeah. definitely dug it uh as we're kind of winding down here, uh, this is breaking news. Uh, uh, this kind of blew me away. They've they've arrested people in connection to Matthew Perry's death. What? It's what it just came across uh, CNN. Is what it just popped up on my phone. Multiple people, not just one person. Multiple people have been made uh, in connection with Matthew Perry's death. This is this is wow. Uh, not to bring this down a little bit, but I just thought that was fascinating. You see it? Yeah. I see it. Hmm. 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 See? We talked about newspapers, and we went right to news. Yeah, we went to a current event but, happening. Yeah, the, the biggest one was always Toronto Science. Oh, we did Medieval Times. That's probably my favorite. We... Because <laughs> there's one in Toronto. Yeah, there's one in the Outer Banks... And when we went to the Outer Banks, we were going to go, but I can't remember what happened to that show. And it actually got canceled. We weren't able to go, and I was so mad. It's if you've seen Cable Guy, yeah, I know exactly what it is. But as a kid, like no, you're thinking no, how I'm cool saying, it's going to be. Yeah, but I'm saying like after seeing like I I went there before Cable Guy. Yeah, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, and then I watched Cable Guy, and I was like, wow, that's an accurate depiction. So that yep. was always a big one. And then if we went to the Toronto Science Museum, then we went to a mall called the Eaton Center. And if we, yeah. had, we could eat lunch there, it, you might be thinking it's, I thought it was like Eaton, like, ooh, like I'm going to like the Eaton Center, but it's more like Mark Eaton, the basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was like a seven foot four guy, block shots. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's how you had to get through the door. Yeah. You ever crossed over <laughs> Mark Eaton? I did a couple of times. But yeah, the Toronto Science Museum was always super huge with everything that you could do there. Like they had a whole rainforest in the in the place. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh Niagara Falls Aquarium was the one, but that was see, I never liked the field trips where I would go normally. Like the aquarium. Yeah, was, I know what you mean. Like an aquarium is somewhere I would want to go anyway. Yeah. So yeah. My mom took us to the aquarium. Yeah, like when yeah, we were going, really we didn't go on very many vacations, but when we did, we definitely went to an aquarium. Yeah, and that's yeah. where we would go to, and that was always like the one where I was like, oh, now I got to do this. No, yeah. but yeah, that that was it. Always the big one though that I enjoyed the most was I think any time I kind of went medieval, medieval times, then like the Toronto Science Museum because it was a lot of stuff to explore. Yeah, my favorite. But other than that, those are majority of field trips i went on Not yeah uh, middle school yeah middle schools were the big ones for me like i said and in fact that's probably yeah, where i started I getting know. in trouble the most because <laughs> <laughs> when i discovered that i was quote unquote funny and i made sure everybody around me knew that <laughs> yeah i learned that one yeah I, so did I, learned all the, that. I did go to the movies with my daughter oh for a field trip yeah because we had like a we called it the cheapy show but it was yeah. called four seasons because Tickets were always dirt cheap. Oh yeah, we have those type of places. Yeah. And then uh I found out my the my the youngest one, Jacoby, he's as a child, he was always into something. I never thought I would have to tell a child don't eat out of the garbage. He swears <laughs> he didn't now that he's older, but he did. Like he got into everything. So yeah. this was kind of don't judge me on this one. Uh, all of a sudden I'm sitting there in the movie theater and it's partly through a movie and I hear my, and I feel my phone vibrate and I look and I'm like, normally I would just hit like ignore. I'm like, I'm on a field trip with my daughter. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? I should answer this. And then all of a sudden they're like, ah, oh, Mr. Lenz, can you come to school? Your son Jacoby has ringworm. And I'm like, how did he get ringworm? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a phone call you expect <laughs> yeah so we're trying to figure out what it was and then obviously i think he was playing like in the dog's dish or something and yeah oh that's quite the conversation that yeah and that was just yesterday right and this happened <laughs> <laughs> you know they, i wish it was honestly <laughs> now that they're older after what i yeah. had battled through this morning to get them to go to school yeah oh yeah wish 
And yeah, that was always that was always uh, an adventure for my mom. I know because uh, my sister and I are so uh, personality are, are very different from each other. And I love my sister, but like she was like she hated school, right? Like it was always a struggle for my mom to get her to go to school. She always she never liked school ever. And uh I think it's just purely because I like to be social and I'd get to talk to different people that I actually enjoyed school and I actually do enjoy learning, uh, especially when it comes to history stuff, obviously. So uh, I actually for the most part, unless there's like a test or something, I always like going to school. I hate know. test, love school. Yeah, I like the social aspect. And your boy over here was considered academically gifted, Andrew. Uh, never once <laughs> that come across. My well, if, if you judge me by now, it means nothing. <laughs> yeah. So here's another funny story where my mother embarrassed the crap out of me. Going to middle school, we would have there was teams, so it was like teams of teachers. So you would just stay in like one kind of hallway area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so I was on the team, but also like the merit kids or academically gifted kids were yeah. also on that team. And my mother didn't register that they like separated us. So she thought I was like on like a whole team of athlete of academically like gifted kids. Yeah. At the orientation, my sixth grade orientation, she brings me down in front of the vice principal and tells him that I cannot be on that team because she doesn't think I will do that great because I'm not that athletically or academically, academically. academically <laughs> gifted. <laughs> so she's like, my kid's an idiot. Don't put him on. Like, no, no. The, the, the merit kids have a different class than all the other kids. And she's like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I have a similar story, but it's completely different in that uh, I hated being in, well, I'm just going to call it AGs because of what we call it, Ac- academically gifted. We just shortened okay. the AG. Yeah, we do. Yeah, they, they gave you an IQ test, which uh, I was never told my IQ. They weren't allowed to tell me my IQ. Why? But it, I don't know, but it was good enough to get into the AG program. But the reason that I remember hating it is that I was stuck in it all through from elementary school, it carried on into middle school and even in the high school. And I got to the point in high school where I just wanted to be in classes with my friends. And I'm like, and I went to my mom and I was like, Mom, I really hate being in this. Can you please get me out of that? And my mom actually went to my teachers, who I always I was very lucky. Most of my teachers were awesome. Uh, but my mom would go to my went to my uh teacher, Miss Thomas. I remember this very strongly. I was like, Hey, can my son get out of this? And Miss Thomas goes, I'm sorry. I think your, <laughs> I think your son's. And this shows what she knew. I think your son's too smart. We're not going to let him out of it. So I never was able to get out of it, even though I really wanted out of it so bad. And I wasn't making straight A's. I was an A and B guy, and C in golf. I had a C in golf class, but that's another story for another time. That was, it was that, I I was the. Uh, I don't know if they ever put comments on your report cards. Yes. Yeah. I was always mine, you'll never guess what my comment always was. He talks too much. <laughs> I got that doesn't sit still. Um it was funny, only the gym teacher and the history teacher always would put it's a pleasure to have in class. <laughs> those are the things you liked. Yeah. yeah. Uh and what was the other one? Oh, it does not work up to his potential. Yeah, I, I would I would get that. But mine's because I hate math, like numbers. I, Unless I'm doing stats for sports or something that's different in my brain, but I just know like doing algebra or or calculus, especially my brain was like, "Why are we doing this?" <laughs> I had a math teacher that stuttered. Oh man! And I told my mother that, and she was like, "What? What's going on?" And I'm like, "Mom, I like I I kind of get it, but she stutters." Yeah, she was like, "They are not gonna hire a teacher that stutters," so. Like my mom always did. She had to go in and talk to my teachers. Um, and found out. <laughs> and uh, found out that she did stutter. And then she goes, she also wears shoes that are way too big for her feet. <laughs> 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 so I kind of got to like slide a little yeah. bit. Like, yeah. Just because That's pretty funny. You know, only because it wasn't the stuttering that bothered her. It was, it was, the, the, it was the shoes. <laughs> her, shoes her shoes were way too big for her feet. 
One of my favorite stand up jokes. Do you uh, have you ever heard of Dimitri Martin, the stand up yes. Dimitri Martin? He has this joke where he's talking about the different types of batteries. You know, you get like double yeah. A batteries, triple A batteries, D batteries. He goes, Why are there no B batteries? And I think it's because if you say B batteries, people think you're stuttering. <laughs> I love that's that. Just, that's such a great joke. I love that one. And the leather jacket. Yes. yes. He talks about yes. he saw a guy with a leather jacket and he was like, That guy's cool. Then I saw a guy with leather with the leather vest. And I was like, that's not very cool. Then it hit me. <laughs> leather sleeves are the cool ones. Yeah. A shout out to Dimitri Martin. Uh, uh, his his setup is so good. But I think uh this field trip's over. Let's uh count. I think we're heading home. We are uh, heading home on the, yeah. on the on the I want to go on the activity bus. On the act- I don't know why it was ever called that because you did nothing on that bus but ride on it. There's no activities happening. It was just on that a bus. standard school bus that was painted. Literally, by- literally just a standard school bus painted white. I'm not even kidding. Nothing different besides the color they painted it. I need to be on an activity bus. <laughs> well, let's get on our activity bus and head back. <laughs> yeah, and I was up. What you would consider privilege, by the way, we're in a pretty poor area, so. That's why I'm like. That's why it's probably blowing your mind. Yeah, I was like, yeah, special buses. Like, I would Niagara Falls is not the most prosperous area, as you well as you can tell by the YouTube video. It's because all the Italian moved away. Right <laughs> That's a joke. Check it out. I actually walked around Niagara Falls asking people why all the Italians moved away. Yeah, he's got to know. Yeah. But that is it. Uh, <laughs> check us out on uh, social medias, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, everything else. And you got anything else, Johnny? Before, oh, Just make sure you check all those out. Andrew does an awesome job with that stuff. Uh, be sure you send us in if you have an idea for a show. We may not take it, but we'll listen to it. And if it's something really cool uh, or that we have experience with, we'll most certainly put it on our list. Uh, we uh, and thank you for listening. I don't know what our numbers are, but I, my brain's going to say they're fantastic. So thank you for listening to us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Well, anybody that listens to us. Yeah. Oh, shout out to uh, Gary T once again for sharing our episodes. That's. Oh yes, good. Gary. Thank you, buddy. He's, Gary's a good dude. So Love shout him. out to Gary. Yeah. He's my uh, my my Devon, and I'm Bubba Ray. Well, he's the only reason I'm even. I can even watch HBO Max. So, <laughs> Gary's a real one in my eyes. Yeah. And with that being said, as our parents come to pick us up, yes, uh, what may not be nostalgia for you may be nostalgia for some. <laughs>